This is the Edexcel Foundation tier paper one non-calculated paper from November 2022. Question one says write 0 0.3 as a fraction. So we've got the, the ones column and then after the decimal point we've got the temps column. So we've got three temps. So it's three over 10, three temps. We can also think of this as three divided by 10. So three temps is the same as three divided by 10, which is 0 0.3. Question two, work out three squared. Squared means times by itself. So three times three is nine. Question three, it's a bid mass or a bod mass question. So we've got to do the brackets first. So it's 20 divided by 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2 is inside a bracket. So we're going to do that first. 3 plus 2 is 5. So the question is 20 divided by 5. How many 5s go into 20? 5 times what is 20? It's 4. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Question 4. Write down a factor of 60 that is between 8 and 14. So the factors of 60 are the numbers that multiply to make 60. So 60 is 1 times 60. It's 2 30s. It's 3 20s. It's 4 15s. It's 5 12s. It's 6 10s. And then it's not in the seven times table or the eight times table or the nine times table. And then we're back to 10. So these are all the factors of 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. So between 8 and 14, we've only got two options. We can have 10 or 12. So you can write either 10 or 12 as your answer. Question five, simplify. Three times W times five times T. So in algebra, we don't write time signs. We just squash it all together. So we can do three times five, which is 15. So this is the same as three times five times W times T or times T times W. So you can rearrange a multiplication and do it in any order and it's still the same so 3 times 5 is 15 and it's times by t and times by w we don't write the time sign we just squash it together 15 tw i've put the t first because we usually write the letters in alphabetical order so t comes before w in the alphabet so i've put it first if you put WT, you would still get the marks, but it's better to write them alphabetically. Question six. Faye is planning a trip to a theme park for one adult and two children. Here are the, these are the costs. So we've got £23 for petrol. We've got £33 for the adult ticket. And we've got £24.50 for each child. And there are two children. So we're going to have to pay that twice. And meals are £15 for the adult and £10 for each child. So again, we're going to have to pay that twice. So the total cost, we need to add up all of these. So we can either write one big addition or we could do it in parts. Let's just write one big addition. So we've got £23, £33. £24.50 twice, so I can either write £24.50 and £24.50 again, or I can double it first, so two £24.50 will be £49. So that's £49. We've got £15, and we've got £10 times two, which is £20. So the total cost is all of these added together. So three and three and nine is 15. Plus another five is 20. So I'm going to put a zero in the ones. And I've got 20, so I've got two more tens. I'm going to add that on here. 
And for the 10s, 2 and 3 plus 4 plus 1 is 10. 5 and 5 make 10. Plus 2 and 2 is 14. So £140 she spends. She has 200. How much money does she have left? So £200 take away £140 will be £60. So she has £60 left. Question 7. Here is a list of eight letters. Write down the mode. So the mode is the most common one. Which letter appears the most times? And that is A. One of the eight letters is going to be picked at random. On the probability scale, mark with a cross, the probability it will be B. So how many Bs are there? There are two Bs out of eight in total. So two out of eight. And well, the probability scale has been splitting to eight for us already. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parts. So two out of eight will be here. And find the probability, the letter will be C. So how many C's are there? There's one C out of eight in total. So that'll be one eighth. Question eight says solve. Solve means find out what the missing letter is. What number is it worth? So solve M minus three equals four. What number take away three equals four? What is M? It must be 7 because 7 take away 3 is 4. Solve 3n plus another n equals 24. When we have 3n's, 3 of something, plus another one of that same something, that's the same as having 4 lots of that something. So 4n's equal 24. 4 times something is 24. 4 times 6 is 24. So n must be 6. So remember 3n means 3 times n and 4n is 4 times n. Question 9. So we've got angles around the point here. Find the value of y. So that the angles around the point the whole way around has to be 360 degrees. So we've got 70 degrees cut off. So what's the rest? 360 take away 70. So 36 take away 7 is 29. So 360 take away 70 must be 290. 290 and 70 add up to make 360. So give a reason for your answer. So the angles around the point have to add to 360 degrees. Question 10. A shop sells jars of coffee. Each jar of coffee costs four pounds. Michael has 23 pounds. Work out the greatest number of jars of coffee Michael can buy. So this is our four times table. Each jar of coffee is four pounds. So we can do four pounds Five times, if you buy five jars, which will be 20 pounds. But if you try to buy six jars, that'll be 24 pounds. So we can only buy five jars. You can't buy the sixth one because it goes over 23 pounds. In a sale on Wednesday, jars of coffee are sold at half price. Michael thinks that he can now buy exactly twice the number of jars of coffee for £23. Is he correct? So they're now £2 each. And can he buy twice as many? Can he buy 10? Well, he can. But he can also buy 11. So he can buy 11 jars for £22. So he's not correct. It's not exactly twice. He can't just buy 10 jars. When they're half the price, he'll be able to buy another one. So he can buy 11 jars. 
So is he correct? So no, he's not correct. He can now buy 11 jars. And 11 is not 5 times 2. Here are two triangles on the grid. Triangle B is an enlargement of triangle A. Write down the scale factor of the enlargement. So how much bigger is B than A? So A had 3 along the top. B's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 along the top. So what's the scale factor? It's twice as big. It's been times by 2. So the scale factor is 2. On the grid, mark for cross the center of enlargement. So all the points on triangle B are twice as far away from each of the points on triangle A from the center of enlargement. And if we just draw some lines to join up the points, so this point, this corner went with this corner, that's the same corner on the other triangle. The top right with the top right. And the bottom with the bottom. So we find they all go to the same point. So that is the center of enlargement. So to get for, to this corner, it's two along, two up. And so it should be four along, four up for the new one. All the points on triangle B are twice as far away from this cross as the points on triangle A. The scale factor is two, it's twice as far away. Here are two parallelograms on a coordinate grid. Parallelogram D is a reflection of parallelogram C. Draw the mirror line. So the mirror line is the diagonal line. Going through 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and so on. Write down the equation for the mirror line. So when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 3, y is 3. This line is called y equals x. On every point along this line, the y coordinate and the x coordinate are the same. It's called y equals x. Question 12. Eleanor spent 120 minutes at a sports center. She played badminton for 50 minutes. She used the swimming pool for one sixth of the 120 minutes. Let's work that out. So a sixth of 120 is the same as 120 divided by six. And that is 20. 12 divided by six is two. So 120 divided by 6 is 20. She used the gym for 20% of the 120 minutes. So again, let's work that out. We can do 10%. We can work out 10% by dividing by 10. So 120 divided by 10 is 12. So that's 10%. And if we double that, we get 20%. That's 24 minutes is 20%. So we've got 50 minutes, 20 minutes, 24 minutes, and she spent the rest of the minutes in the cafe. So how long did she spend in the cafe? So 50, 20, and 24. How many minutes is that? So we've got 50, we've got 20, and 24. So 50 minutes playing badminton, 20 in the swimming pool, 24 in the gym. So 0, 0, and 4 is 4. 5, 2, and 2 is 9. That's 94 minutes. How many are left? So 6 minutes to get to 100. And then another 20. So 26 minutes in the cafe. Eleanor got to the sports centre at 1.30. She had asked her friend to meet her in the cafe at 3pm. 
Did Elena get to the cafe by 3 p.m.? So she took 94 minutes playing badminton, swimming, and gym. She got there at 1.30, so 90 minutes is an hour and a half. So 60 minutes gets to 2.30. Another 30 minutes gets to 3 o'clock. Another 4 minutes gets there to 3.04. So 1.30 plus 94 minutes would be 3.04. So no, she did not. Question 13. The composite bar chart shows information about the number of people living in a village. So we've got the year 2000, 2010, 2020, and it's going up each time. Write down the number of men living in the village in the year 2000. So men is the dark one, and that is 60. Find the number of children in 2010. So children's the top one. So it goes from 160 to 210, which is 50. For the people living in the village in 2020, so that's the last bar now, find the ratio of the number of children to the total number of men and women. So the number of men and women is 200. How many children? So it goes from 200 up to 280. There must be 80 children. So 80 to 200. It doesn't say simplify, so I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it as 80 to 200. Question 14. Jenny drives from London to Swindon at an average speed of 54 miles per hour. She drives for one and a half hours. Work out the distance. So for this one, we could use speed equals distance over time. And so that means the distance is the speed times the time. So we multiply both sides by a time. So to get rid of a divide, we do a times. So it would be distance equals speed times time. You could have also just worked it out. 54 miles per hour. That's 54 miles for every hour. And then half an hour will be half of 54 and add them together. So either way, so it's 54 plus half of a 54. So in half of an hour, we can go half of 54, which is 27. So in one hour, 54 miles. In half an hour, 27 miles. So 54 plus 27. 4 plus 7 is 1. No, 4 plus 7 is 11. So 1 in the 1s. Carry over a 1. 5 plus 2 plus 1 is 8. So that's 81 miles. Alexi is using a map. The map has a scale of 1 to 25,000. On the map, the road has a length of 6. So in real life, it's 25,000 times as big. Work out in length in kilometres of the real road. So it's 6 times 25,000. That's the real length. So 625s are 150. That's 150,000 centimetres in real life. But the question says, give the answer in kilometres. So we want to know how many kilometres that is. So we change centimetres to kilometres by dividing by 100. So 150,000 centimetres is the same as 1,000 
500 meters and then to change meters into kilometers divide by a thousand so 1.5 kilometers a thousand meters makes a kilometer so we've got one and a half or 1.5 kilometers question 15 find the coordinates of the midpoint pq so where is the middle of the line pq so if we've got a line p to q where's the middle of it so from negative two up to four what's the middle so what's halfway up that's going to be at one so the midpoint is halfway up so three on each side and that should be halfway across two and a half on each side so what's the coordinates of that cross so x first minus a half and then y one so minus 0 0.5 one question 16 here's a quadrilateral a b c d all measurements are in centimeters the perimeter is 52 work out the length of dc so what's the perimeter of this shape to find the perimeter we add up all of the lengths so we can do it in terms of x and then we know that has to be equal to 52 so we can make it into an equation so if we add up all of these terms all of these expressions and then make it equal to 52 we can solve we can find out what x is so we've got 2x plus 2x plus x plus x that'll be 6x's and we've got plus 1 minus 1 which is nothing minus 5 so minus 5 equals 52 so that all the way around the edge is 6x plus 5 if we add all these expressions up and then that must be equal to 52 so we could solve the equation now so if we plus 5 to both sides so whatever we do to one side of the equation we do the same to the other side plus 5 plus 5 so that'd be 57 so 6x's must be worth 57 because 57 take away 5 is 52 and then to get x by itself divide both sides by 6 so x must be whatever 57 divided by 6 is and we want to know dc so we could simplify this fraction 57 and 6 will both be in the 3 times table so if we simplified it so let's put 57 over 6 57 59 57 is 19 times 3 because 60 is 20 times 3 and it's one less 3 so if i divide top and bottom by 3 i'm going to have 19 over 2 19 over 2 which i can also write as nine and a half half of 19 is 9.5 so x is 19 no x is 19 over 2 or 9.5 i'll leave it as 19 over 2 because we need to work out the length of dc and that's 2x so 2x is 2 times 19 over 2 which is of course if you divide by 2 and times by 2 you end up with the same number you started with so that's 19 so it's 19 centimeters question 17 there are only blue counters green counters red counters and yellow counters in a bag the table shows the number of blue counters in the bag there's a total of 100 counters in the bag Ashin takes a random counter from the bag 
Find the probability it's not blue. So if there are 70 blue and 100 in total, no, 30 blue, that means there are 70 not blue because there are 100 in total. So there are 70 out of 100 that are not blue. The ratio of blue to green is 2 to 3. Work out how many green. So 2 to 3 is the ratio of blue to green. But we know there are 30 blues. So how many greens? So this ratio must be the same. To get from 2 to 30, we times by 15. So 3 15s are 45. So there are 45 green counters. Bradley says the number of red and yellow counters is the same. Can Bradley be correct? So there are 30 and 45 so far. So there are 75. 30 plus 45 equals 75. That means there must be 25 red and yellow in total. Can they be the same? Well, no, because 25 is an odd number. There, there would be 12 and a half of each, and we can't have half a counter. So, no. So there cannot be 12 and a half counters. You can't have half a counter or anything like that. So 25 is an odd number. So if you half it, you won't get a whole number. Anything like that is our answer. So you cannot have half a counter. Question 18. There are 240 cans of drink on a shelf. Each can contains cola or lemonade or orange. And we've got a ratio, 5 to 3 to 2. So straight away, we know we can share out the 240 in this ratio. And then we're told half the lemonade and a twelfth of the orange are removed work out the number of cans so let's work out how many there are to start with so 240 the ratio 5 to 3 to 2 that's 10 parts so 240 divided by 10 means there are 24 cans for each part so we've got 5 5 3 and 2 for cola, lemonade, and orange. So there's 24 in each part. So there are 24 times 5 cola. So 24 times 10 is 240. Half of that is 120. 24 times 3. Let's do 24 times 2 first, which is 48. And then we've got one more 24. So add on 20 would be 68. Add on 4 would be 72. So we know how many we've got to start with. Half of the lemonade are removed so half of 72 is 36 so there are 36 lemonade left a twelfth of the orange are removed so 48 divided by 12 is 4 so 4 orange are removed that means there's 44 left and there's still 120 cola Work out the number of cans of cola as a percentage of the total remaining. So how many are remaining? 120, 36 and 44. 
That's going to be a nice number. 6 and 4 make 10. 2 and 3 plus 4 and 1 is 10 again. So there are 200 remaining. So we've got 120 out of 200. To make it a percentage, we want it to be out of 100. So half the top, half the bottom. 60 out of 100 is 60%. So a percent just means per 100. So 60 one hundredths is 60%. Question 19. Write 500 as a product of its prime factors. So product means multiplied together. Prime factors. So break 500 down until we've only got prime numbers left. Let's start with 500. I can say that it's 2, lots of 250. And 2 is a prime number. So 2 times 250 is 500. I can break 250 down again. It's in 2 times table again. 2 times 125. 2 is prime. 125 is in the 5 times table. And it's 5 lots of 25. And 25 is 5 times 5 again. So I can say 500 is the same as 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 5. So it's, I've written 500 as prime numbers multiplied together. So it's a product of its prime factors. You can also write this as 2 squared times 5 cubed. Work out 1 and 3 fifths plus 2 and a quarter. Give your answer as a mixed number. So I am going to change these fractions first. I don't have to, but um, in some cases it's nicer to. I'm going to change them into top-heavy fractions. So 1 and 3 fifths. If we're in fifths, a whole one is 5 fifths. So 5 fifths and 3 fifths mean we've got 8 fifths. One whole one and 3 fifths is the same as 8 fifths. A whole is 5 plus another 3 is 8. And 2 and a quarter. So if we've got quarters, two whole ones will be eight quarters, two lots of four is eight, plus another quarter is nine quarters. So I've got eight fifths plus nine quarters. To add fractions, we need the denominators to be the same. We can only add fractions if the bottom number is the same. So I've got a five and a four. The easiest way to do this is to times the top and bottom of our fifths of our left fraction by 4, and the top and the bottom of the right fraction by 5. So 4 eighths are 32, 4 fives are 20, 5 nines are 45, 4 fives are 20. So now they're both in 20ths, we can add them together, they're the same. So 32 and 45 is going to make 77. So I've got 77 twentieths. I want a mixed number. So how many whole numbers have I got? How many holes have I got? Well, the 20 times table goes 20, 40, 60, 80. So I can do three whole ones, which will be 60. That'll be 60 twentieths. And then I've got 17 more. 60 plus 17 makes 77. So three whole ones and 17 twentieths. Part B, show that two and two thirds divided by six equals four ninths. So I've got two and two thirds. So again, I've, I'm in thirds. Two whole ones is going to be six thirds. Two threes are six. So six thirds and two thirds is eight thirds. So it's eight thirds 
divided by 6. Whenever we've got a division, we can change it into a multiplication question by flipping over our what we're dividing by, flipping over the thing we're dividing by. So we can think of this as 6 over 1 at the moment. So I can change it to a times. And if I flip over 6 over 1, it's 1 6th. So show that this is equal to 4 ninths. Just times the top, times the bottom. So 8 eighteenths. And that simplifies half the top, half the bottom to 4 ninths. Question 21. 2 to the power of negative 5 times 2 to the power of 8 squared give your answer as a power of 2. So let's do the brackets first. So 2 to the power of negative 5 times 2 to the power of 8. When we multiply indices, we add the powers. So negative 5 plus 8 is positive 3. Negative 5 plus 8 is 3. So I've got 2 cubed squared. 2 cubed squared. So squared means times itself. So I could actually rewrite it as 2 cubed times 2 cubed. And when I multiply the indices, I add the powers. 3 plus 3 is 6. There's also a quick way without rewriting this. So when we've got a bracket, we just times these two together. So 2 cubed squared is just 2 to the power of 3 times 2, which is 6. Question 22. Work out 0 0.004 times 0 0.32. So we've got a multiplying decimals question. So we can ignore the decimals and just work out 4 times 32. But just take a note, tell me numbers after the decimal point in the question. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five numbers after the decimal point in the question. So 4 times 32. 2 4s are 8. 3 4s are 12. So 128. But we've got five numbers after the decimal point in the question. So we want five numbers after the decimal point in the answer. So it's going to be 0 0.00. .00 one, two, eight. Five numbers after decimal point in the question, five after the decimal point in the answer. Question 23. A car factory is going to make four different car models, A, B, C, and D. 80 people are asked which of the four models they most likely buy. The table shows information about the results. The factory is going to make 40,000 cars next year. How many Bs should they make? So we had 15 out of 80. So how many would that be out of 40,000? So 15 out of 80. We could simplify the fraction. That's probably going to be nicer. So if I... Well, I'd quite like to half it to make it 40. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go 7.5. I wouldn't usually do that with a fraction to make it a decimal on top. But 7.5 out of 40 is the same as what number out of 40,000? Well, we just need to times by 1,000 now. So 7.5 times 1,000 will be 7,500. So it's the same fraction. 15 out of 80 is the same as 7,500 out of 40,000. If I had done it differently, if I'd gone 15 out of 80, they're both in the five times table. That's the same as three sixteenths. I would have had to scale up the sixteenths, which wouldn't have been particularly nice to get to 40,000. So I think it was better the way I did it. Question 24. 
Rizwan writes down three numbers, A, B, and C. A to B, the ratio of A to B is 1 to 3. The ratio of B to C is 6 to 5. Find the ratio of A to B to C. So to make it into one ratio, the B number is going to have to be the same. So 1 to 3 and 6 to 5. A to B is 1 to 3. B to C is 6 to 5. So I can make B the same by doubling the first one, which should become 2 to 6. So now they're the same. Now the Bs are the same. I can just put it together into one ratio, 2 to 6 to 5. So now A and B are in the ratio 1 to 3 still, and B and C are still in the ratio 6 to 5. Express A as a fraction of the total of the three numbers A, B, and C. So A is two parts. A, B, and C, 2 plus 6 plus 5 is 13. So it's 2 thirteenths. Emma writes down three numbers M, N, and P. So N is 2 times M. If N is 2 times N, imagine M was 1, N would be 2. So the ratio of N to M, so if M is 1, N is 2. N is always going to be double what M is. If M was 10, 2 10s would be 20. So the ratio is 2 to 1, N to M. For P to N, if N is 1, P would be 5. So the ratio of P to N is 5 to 1. We need to make n the same again. Let's double this one, make n into 2. That would be 10 to 2. So the ratio of n to m to p, n is 2 parts, m is 1, and p is 10. And we just want m to p, so cross out n, it's 1 to 10. Question 25. A storage tank exerts a force of 10,000 newtons on the ground. So we've got pressure equals force over area. So the force is 10,000. The base of the tank in contact with the ground is 4 by 2. So a rectangle 4 by 2. What's the area? 8 meters squared. So what's the pressure? 10,000 divided by 8. So we can half top and bottom, 5,000 over 4. Half again, 2,500 over 2. Half of 2,500, 1,250. And it's pressure, it's measured in newtons per meter squared. Question 26. Solve 5x over 2 plus 3 is greater than 18. So it's a solve question. We're finding out what x can be. The only difference this time is it's not an equals, it's an inequality. So we're going to end up with x is bigger than a number. So we want to get rid of a plus 3. To get rid of a plus 3, we do the opposite. The opposite of plusing 3 is taking away 3. So I'm going to take away 3 from both sides, which will leave me with 5x divided by 2 is bigger than taking away 3, 18 take away 3, 15. 5x divided by 2 is bigger than 15. To get rid of a divide by 2, I do the opposite of dividing by 2. That's doubling or timesing by 2. So 5x is bigger than 30. And to get rid of a times by 5, do the opposite. That's dividing by 5. So that just leaves us with x is bigger than 6. x is bigger than 6.
b says factorize x squared plus 10x plus 9. Factorize means put into brackets. And this is double brackets. Whenever something's in this form, x squared plus something x plus something, it's a double bracket. x goes in both. x times x makes x squared. And then these two numbers here, they multiply to make the number on the end. They multiply to make 9. So it can only be 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. And they add to make the middle number, which is 10. So it's going to be 1 and 9 plus 1 and plus 9. 1 and 9 add to make 10 and they multiply to make 9. If you'd have written 9 and 1 the other way around, that would be absolutely fine as well.